people. We're Ernie and Bert, more than just friends. Lifetime partner. And who really broke up the world's biggest band? Me and Yoko broke up the Beatles. Because I was doing her on the roof of Apple Studios. Plus, wife swapping, whooping, making, waterbed shaking, and love American style. Because you love the 70s, because you've still got those bell bottoms with the ass patches, admit it. This is 1970. Five of the most exciting young performers in America today, the Jackson Five. What? Jackson Five was the truth. Them set the trend, man, the years to come. This is when they were all black, and they were amazing. Jackson Five, there. That's my heart, man. I mean, it was me. Except I don't have, you know, five brothers. I used to cry myself to sleep thinking that I was going to marry Michael Jackson. <laughs> and now. <laughs> get out, get out. I think I love you. I think I love you. I remember doing that. Like when you're a kid, you got to provide Thanksgiving entertainment for the family. So, you know, it was either doing that or I'd, I'd have to do the robot. Their look was pure 70s. They had the bell-bottom pants, they had colors, they had the apple hats with the matching apple vest, and everybody emulated them in my neighborhood. Everybody wanted an afro. Everybody wanted to dance. Dun, 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 dun. I would have to say that my favorite Jackson was Jermaine, because I use that word a lot in conversation, you know. Yes, but is that Jermaine to the, the subject matter? I used to like Michael and Jermaine when they would go back to back. Tito don't get enough respect. Tito was the only person that actually played an instrument, the guitar. Tito was the forgotten Jackson, let's face it. That's why I liked him, because all, while all the other girls were focusing on Michael, my eyes automatically drifted to Tito. Loved him. Tito, if you out there, you the best Jackson ever. Sally. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. A true advertising slogan. Come on, it's not falling down. Well, of course they don't fall down, they're round. It's like saying a basketball doesn't fall down. For some reason, I always equated the Weeble Wobbles with alcoholism in some weird way. Because, you know, they weeble around, but they don't fall down, but they can still fly planes. Weebles were weapons. That was just something you whipped at your little brother. You would get weebled. And this little guy, he's a Native American weeble. But I bet you back then they probably just said he's an Indian weeble. Were there minority weeble wobbles? Do you know? I used to have a weeble, but mine was was a, a brother. He had like a little afro on the head of his weeble. He would just wobble, wobble, wobble because the hair was too much. What goes up must come down. The weebles were a very proud people. You could say to them, I'm putting you down, and yet they would not be kept down. Here, take a look, you know. You can see they... They wobble and they. This wobble just fell. This weeble just fell on me. Down goes weeble. Down goes weeble. I love 70s. Sesame Street is a show where people and monsters live together in tenement buildings. Humans and animals and funny looking little people all over the place, and I don't mean the children. One of these things is not like the others. This is a capital M. Right. This is lower case, eh? They taught you a little bit of Spanish. Abieto, Cerrado. You know what I liked? I liked the big letter A. Big Bird owned the street. Kermit was just out of the pond. And what's a frog doing on the street anyway? I think Kermit could be drop kicked. <laughs> Cookie Munch was my favorite. C is for Cookie. That's good enough for me. He just up like this, Cookie Monster. I want Cookie. <laughs> Ernie and Bird are. Lifetime partner. Oh, princess! Voila! Marry me! Burton Ernie is the reason that so many states have domestic partnership laws. I mean, they're called the Burton Ernie laws. Is there nothing sacred? Just two guys living together, that's all. And one just happens to have a rubber ducky. Hello there. 
This is your old pal, Grover. Today, boys and girls, we are going to learn the difference between murder and he like, Just the snuffleupagus with his long eyelashes. What do you think of my costume? Didn't someone say he was a heroin? Yeah, he'd come around. He'd be all, <laughs> you know, sedated. Hey, what's going on, big boy? Because a doctor is a person in your neighborhood. There was no urban blight on Sesame Street. Nobody was screaming at each other. No one was fighting over parking. It was just Muppets singing and having fun and talking about numbers and letters. They're the people that you meet each day. Partridge family. I wanted to be in the band. I wanted to live in that bus. The bus was a piece of crap, but what it represented was beautiful. I don't know why they needed a bus. There was only five or six of them, but fine. Nothing better than the garage band that includes your mom. I used to have vivid sexual fantasies about Shirley Jones, the mom. Put her in the hot pants and a little Paul Revere ruffled shirt, you know? We've got charisma, mom, but you've got sex appeal. Susan Day. <laughs> Smoking! I like the two little kids in the Partridge family whose job it was to do nothing. Don't put that drumstick up your nose. Why not? They just stood in the back and sort of got the words wrong. And then the girl did this a lot. It seems to me that David Cassidy might be saying, Mom, are these guys getting paid the same as I'm getting paid? When I think about Danny Bonaducci at that age and how cute he was, and what an arrogant, loudmouth bozo he is now. Oh my, oh my. You wish you could freeze him in time. I think I'll be at least 11 and a half before I'm emotionally mature. Keith Partridge was the original feathered hair boy crush. David Cassidy was maybe the most popular figure on TV when that show was on. Because he was pretty like a bitch, let's be honest. I wanted so bad to be Keith Partridge. I wanted to look like him, sing like him. I wanted the chicks to dig me like him. God played a cruel joke on me, man. I, I did everything I could. Reuben Kincaid is a disgrace to show business management. He got them the shittiest gigs ever. What a shyster. Turns out he ripped him off for like $5.2 million. Prick, coke, hookers. Please don't remind me. Rock and roll. Yee Haw was the best show that's ever been made. Was there a premise to Yee Haw? I mean, was there another level to that that I didn't understand? It's just country bumpkins laughing it up. Roy Clark and company. Hilarious. I'm a pickin' and I, he's a grinning. Even at the age of 10, I was too sophisticated for hee-haw. <laughs> Did he say what I thought he said? I grew up in Iowa. Hee-haw was masterpiece theater to us. You met, you met another, another and you were gone. gone. I remember my dad watching hee-haw, especially the hee-haw honeys. Dad was all up in the honeys. How do these backward hicks get these good looking women lulu the fat one i think that's where i developed my <clears throat> you know proclivity to the larger ladies junior sample was my favorite character on he uh, he told jokes but i don't even think he understood the punchlines what did judge lock up old stan hawkins for bigotry he had three wives that's not bigotry that trauma's <laughs> I, I can't say that that guy gave me hope to be in show business because if he could do it, maybe I could do it. I think I could have been on Hee Haw if I wanted. I think whoever showed up on the set could be in the show. Hee Haw did more damage to rural America than Deliverance did. I love 70s. Coming up, wife swapping sweeps the nation. Your heart, your soul, your feelings can belong to one person, and your genitalia can travel. Plus, can two divorced men share an apartment without driving each other crazy? And the true meaning of love. Love means never having to say you're sorry. What? Next on I Love 1970. But first, the roller rink anthem of 1970. Leif Garrett here. 
Get ready to bust out the bell bottoms and lace up those skates. Because it's time for the roller rink anthem of night. Never skate angry. I Love the 70s is brought to you by the letter V, the letter H, and the number 1. You get to make it with a hot chick from Studio 54. Go forward four spaces. You're watching I Love the 70s on VH1. Foxy Ladies of 70s. Eric Estrada here, sending out an APB for the foxiest ladies of 1970. Do you copy? Goldie Hawn, sock it to me, foxy lady. Elizabeth Montgomery, foxy witch lady. And Jane Fonda, the foxiest fox this side of Saigon. That's a big 10-4 on the foxy ladies of 1970. And yes, they can call me Punch any day. I love the Carol Burnett Show. The whole country stopped to watch that show. Thank you. Welcome to our show this evening. I loved when she talked to the audience and let them ask questions. Yes. What year did I start in show business? <laughs> You're cute. How did you get in? She looked pretty normal. She looked like your aunt, Carol. But you funny goofy. Wait a minute. Aren't you going to walk for a lady a drink? <laughs> Who got so into the whole thing and goofing around that they would start laughing. And that was what I waited for. Where are you from? <laughs> I still have this memory of Tim Conway as the butler with gloves on trying to open the door. And then he ends up getting on top of the doorknob and his whole body just sort of tips to the side. They hired Vicki Lawrence because she looked like Carol Burnett. In case we're going to do a lot of mother-daughter skits, that kind of thing. I heard Tarzan Joe was great. We gotta watch tonight. See if some jerk off in the audience asks her to do the Tarzan yell again. And I remember her as Scarlett O'Hara when she came down the staircase with the drapery poles and the drapes and the whole hoot nanny. The gown is gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. I saw it in the window and I just couldn't resist it. I think the ear tugging thing was a signal to some sort of communist connection that she had that, you know, after the Red Scare, that she was kind of letting you know, we're still out there. And at home, there were minions going, hey, hey. Wonderful. Carol Burnett's phenomenal. She should be encased in something so we can all treasure her forever. Right on. I do remember Love American Style. That was the love boat, not on a boat. It was every bad kind of love sketch. Different actors every week, and then with the same kind of in and out heart with the American flag in it. It was a piece of crap, the that show. It was really crappy. Well, what did you think I meant when I said I was a swinger? <laughs> that show turned me on. That was like my first taste of porn. I would watch that show and think like, oh my God, who's going to do it? Who knows what might happen later? Yeah, that's something to think about. Add a little hardcore to it. Would have made a great adult movie. Hello, Daddy. Welcome home. Maybe the tease, the foreplay, and then bingo, right to the sex, you know? I love 70s. Wife swapping was really big in the 70s. There was a movie about that as well, Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice. It's physical fun. It's, it's just sex. I'm all for wife swapping, as long as you're swapping up. The party is where everybody puts their keys in a bowl, and then, and then you win a new car, right? They'd drop their car keys in a bowl, and at the end of the night, you would pick a different key out, and that's the person that you were going to... When I started in rock and roll, we never even bothered with the keys. <laughs> your heart, your soul, your feelings can belong to one person, 
And your genitalia can travel. Hey, I'm kind of into this free thinking thing. All right! I missed those. Where was I? Can I have a cigarette? I stuck with him. I hope that my parents were never involved in something like this. And I don't remember any bowls of keys at my house during their cocktail parties. I remember hot, drunk, sexy moms hanging on my dad. And I would think, you know, gee, my dad's really popular. And I had no idea that these women really wanted to just f*** my dad's brains out. I just think it sets you up for such regret. Wow, I really should have married Jane. Ow. <laughs> Water beds. One word. Tacky. Tacky. Who filled up a plastic bag of water and said, I should sleep on that? Why just water? Pudding beds. How about that? Because at least it would have a little more stability. Rock the boat, don't rock the boat, baby. One of the most uncomfortable things I've ever slept in because you sunk in the middle. The first one to start complaining would be the little misses, you know, because you'd start getting seasick. Slush, slush, slush. Very unsexy. And there's a leak. That can be really big trouble. Because here you are, you're rocking and rolling, doing your thing with your favorite girl. All of a sudden, you, you feel this wetness, and you say, wait a minute, I know this girl didn't pee on me. And if they have sex, sorry, they suck. Because you want to have your knees in a certain position where you can be stable. Really only need to push the first time, and then the rest of the time, you just go for the ride. Yeah, turkey. Here come the newlyweds. This is the show where new couples would argue on television for our amusement. How much do you know about your mate? Nobody knew anything about the person they were married to. For five points, how did your husband complete this sentence? My wife has the world's blankest what? Yeah. He said the world's longest hair. Longest hair? If I blanked your wife's blank, what kind of blank would I find? Bill said my wife has the world's blankest expression in the morning. Uh, Especially early in the morning, Annie. Why would you expect me to do early in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> The new wet game really placed the word whoopee into the American lexicon. Where specifically is the weirdest place that you have ever gotten the urge to make whoopee? I knew that question was coming up. And this is a question you're now going to direct at us. Are you talking about self whoopee or whoopee with others? At the Holleran Hotel on the 25th floor. No, there was that time in Hugh Hefner's pool, actually. <laughs> on the floor of the service elevator. We would actually... I'd uh, leave it there, Jerry. Uh, let's leave it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the greatest answer of all time. Um. <laughs> Go ahead. In the... <laughs> In the fanny? Well, there are different strokes for different folks. Whatever makes you happy, whatever orifice works for you. I love Macho Men of 70. Bo Derek here with the Macho Men of 1970. Jack Lord, Hawaii 5 Macho Man. Book him, Dano. Frank Gifford, Monday Night Football Macho Man. And James Brolin. The macho man who went from playing a doctor to playing doctor with Babs. Macho, macho, macho man. I love the 70s. I love the 70s. The, da, 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 da. the music and all that, I loved it. I always thought the Mod Squad was pretty mod. They were very cool. Hey, baby. Remember that chick you said you were going to kill? Can I have a number before you kill it? The Mod Squad had everything. Hip clothes, hot music, cool storylines, sexy guys. I mean, who didn't love Pete? My name is Pete Cochran. I used to go to school with Kurt. They were the totally unexpected cops. They weren't in the uniform. They were in mod. The black guy with the afro, out of control. Nobody had a fro like Link. He was hot. I'll buy that. Julie was kind of nice, too. That's <laughs> when so I started noticing women in a big way. <laughs> Peggy Lipton had the job of jobs. She was hot, and she got to work with two really cool cats. I love the turtlenecks and the scarves and the long, straight hair parted in the middle. Television has not changed much in 30 years. You get the best-looking people you possibly can find, and you have them solve crimes.
Mod Squad. We'll be back in a moment. You did. On November 13th, Felix Unger was asked to remove himself from his place of residence. That request came from his wife. <laughs> Felix and Oscar the Rod. Lyrics that not many people know about. Can two divorced men share an apartment without driving each other crazy? He's a huge fan of the odd couple. Of course, during the opening credits, some of the funniest things in the show. Felix gets punched by a Boy Scout. He skewers a cigar stub. I remember thinking, what's that hot dog doing there? And then inexplicably, they're doing the hokey pokey with an Indonesian girl in Central Park. I don't know what that's about. One is a complete slob, and the other one is anal retentive, obsessive compulsive, who really should be on some kind of medication. I'm giving you fair warning. If you don't let me clean up in here, I'm going to pack my things, and I'm leaving. I'm an Oscar guy, without a doubt. I'm a sports guy. I'm a mess. Oh, God, you have a groovy in look. You're what's happening. I gravitated more towards Oscar, but about 14% of me, because I'm about 14% gay, went to, for Felix. I'd like to meet a nice girl, but it... it... You're talking like Mr. Clean here, you know what I'm saying? It's like, Felix, would you mind doing my laundry? Can I throw those socks in there? Hey, you get them back, fold it and iron and put it in your drawer. Would you do me a favor? What? For my birthday, let me clean up in here. No! Having the last name Unger created a lot of hell for me and my brothers. People would relentlessly call us Felix until my brother beat the shit out of someone with a bat. And no one ever called us Felix again. <laughs> <laughs> News break. So Elvis is in D.C. in 1970, and he decides to stop by the White House. Even if you're Nixon, you got to think to yourself, all right, if the freak show's coming right into my office, you know, i got to open the door. This is one of the all-time great summits. I mean, you had to wonder what was said in that meeting. Peanut butter and banana sandwiches for everybody. Nixon gave Elvis an honorary a membership in the Drug Enforcement Agency, which was, I think, cutting to the chase because Elvis knew where the drugs were. Good choice, Dick. I even knew at a very young age that this guy could not be your drug czar. He got all the drugs off the street and into his stomach. And then they brokered the uh, peace in Vietnam together. A lot of people don't know that. Black Sabbath scared the crap out of me. I didn't know what they were about, what they had to do with the devil, but I stayed away. Just the words scared me. I just remember saying, Mom, what's a Black Sabbath? Anybody who can remember the members of Black Sabbath didn't do nearly as much acid as I did. Ozzy Osbourne, Tony Iommi, Geezer Butler, Bill Ward. I used to think Black Sabbath was something like the Black Panthers. I used to think it was a street thing. I love 70s. Sing, sing a song. It's always been an audience for easy listening music. In the 70s, the people who are listening to easy listening music were primarily um, sad people, older people, and men who wanted to have sex with women who were listening to easy listening. What an ironically titled segment of music. Ah! I hated the Carpenters. <laughs> Even though I was a young man, I knew enough to uh, not enjoy the Carpenters. But when you're alone in the car by yourself, and you know, one of those catchy Carpenters tunes came on, you find yourself singing along. They just sort of massaged you with the softness of their music and lyrics. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? The soft sound was attributed to uh, right when, like, Close to You came out and Make It With You by Bread came out. I want to make it with you. I want to make it with you. Really? Well, you are a smooth talker. This was before I was dating, so I could just sort of dream of the guy and say, baby, I'm going to want you, and baby, I'm going to need you. I don't know what the hell that meant to, like, a 10-year-old girl. You, you know, if you're going to name yourself Brad, that's the music you make. 
It's easy to listen to. You don't have to do anything. You know, you can't bang your head. You can't even tap your foot to it. You just close your eyes and... Sally. Welcome to ABC's Monday Night National Football League television series. In 1970, Monday Night Football changed America. Going deep, down the sideline, Sauer is there, he's got it! Six o'clock in California, nine o'clock in New York, you know where most men were. And even if they were not there, that's what they told their wives. Get up, for that thing! Monday Night Football, there was nothing like, this is how work goes out. The ball picked off again by Mike Wagner, who had three interceptions on the day. It just sounded like he had some brandy in a cigar. He was pimping. Yeah. <laughs> Howard Cosell, as far as I'm concerned, is the greatest. Pompous, obnoxious, vain, a show. There's no question that I'm all of those things. He would talk and there would be something caught in his nasal cavity. That's all the space he's going to need. Watch him go down the sideline. You always... We're waiting for the next word to come out of his mouth. Oh, don't tell me they didn't get it. When I was a stand-up comic in college, my final bit would be to read the penthouse forums in Howard Cosell's voice. What kind of surrealistic nonsense is this? Whether it was in the letter or not, uh, I would always end it with, I nearly shot my load. We have animals here. Animals. I'm very proud of myself, desecrating the memory of a man I, I hold so near and dear. I love 70. Coming up. The furry magic of Neil Diamond. He was just pure, hairy, machismo sex. And the dark underbelly of the Bradys. Where was the other mother and the father? Next on I Love 1970. But first, remember this? Nine Lives presents Morris. Hey, Nine Lives tuna, liver, kidney, tuna, and egg, super supper. Tonight we're having Nine Lives chicken parts. Uh, not too fast, no. <laughs> Look around. Act finicky. Oh, forget it. I'm hungry. Mm. Like that, Sweetums? Mm, Sweetums likes them all, as long as they're Nine Lives. <laughs> Wonders of 70. I'm Linda Carter, bringing you the wonders of 1970. 70 saw the birth of the first floppy disk, the pocket calculator, and the computer mouse. Giving nerds everywhere three more reasons to put off their first kiss. I love the 70s. I love the 70s. Love Story was a phenomenon. Everybody was seeing it, and it was all people talked about. Da, 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 Where do I begin? Where do I begin to tell a story of a rich chick that is dying? I think it's all it is, yeah. The sweet love, the sweet love story that is older than the sea. The truth about the love she gave to me. Where do I start? I love Where that song. Where do I start? I would rather have jumped in a river of snot than gone to see that movie at that time. I was at college. Boy meets girl, boy marries girl, boy and girl deliver the most unimaginably cheesy lines ever written. Hey, if you're so convinced I'm a loser, why did you bulldoze me into buying you coffee? I like your body. She sent you preppy. I am not talking legality preppy. I'm nothing sexual preppy. Preppy, preppy, preppy. And he called her a stuck-up bitch. You conceited Radcliffe bitch. And she was won over by that. Poor Ellie McGraw. Aren't you a good Catholic girl? I just thought Ryan O'Neill was just... <gasps> I'm rich, really. I'm... Really, I'm like a millionaire. I love when they make all the snow angels, and she's wearing those knits, which I imagine get really sort of like wet and musty, rolling around in all that snow. Allie McGraw with her little crochet hat became a fashion icon, at least among, you know, ingenue young chicks. You're a heartless bastard. I just thought she shook his world up, and I love that. I wanted to find an Oliver that I could ruin. I'm sorry. <laughs> Love means never having to say you're sorry. What? Love means never having to say you're sorry. That makes no sense. I want to see that meeting where they were all sitting around going, yeah, 
That's the tag. Love means never having to say you're sorry is an insane, nuts thing to say for an insane, nuts, evil movie. They have this great love story. It's like perfect. And then she dies. Healthy looking. However, I might add, with perfect hair and a full on glow to her skin. I don't want to see a movie that's going to make me cry my eyes out. Now, if i got a few bucks to spend on a film, I want to be entertained. I might have my heart torn out of my chest. Sorry. Neil Diamond, Jewish Elvis. That's all you need to know. Huge Neil Diamond fan. When he's up there, he just brings it. Neil Diamond doesn't leave anything for the after party. Neil Diamond is the man. I, I'm obsessed with Neil Diamond. I have dreams about him. I love him. Neil, I love you. He was a sex symbol in a way that made you think about like your teachers having sex it was wrong. I remember Neil Diamond wore the most gigantic collars of any human alive. The collar I'm wearing today is nothing compared to the size of Neil Diamond's collar. That's suspiciously weirdly you know, combed hair that was sort of like cotton candy flopped over. I think he summed up the 70s. He had the sideburns, he had the open shirt, and he was just pure, hairy, machismo sex. Liking him so much really makes me question even my sexuality. News break. The Beatles, millionaires before they were 30, are breaking up. I remember crying when the Beatles broke up. Crying because I was nine months old and nine month old babies cry a lot. Breaking up is hard to do. There's many different reasons why the Beatles broke up. You got the, hey, we've been in this band for too long and I'm sick of you reasons. Just broke up out of sheer boredom. You got the wife reasons. Got a black magic Yoko. Yoko broke up the Beatles. Yoko didn't break up the Beatles. Me and Yoko broke up the Beatles. Because I was doing her on the roof of Apple Studios. Everybody blamed Yoko. I kind of did too, until later on in my life, when I uh, was with somebody famous and everybody blamed me for everything, so then I kind of understood that wasn't Yoko's fault. It was really sad for all of us, you know. We realized without the Beatles around, there was no stopping disco. I love 70. We used to watch Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. And I always thought that Omaha was in Africa. I didn't understand that it was an insurance company in the Midwest. Mutual of Omaha's people. You can count on when the going's rough. Marlin! Hello. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Born to be wild. Yeah, lots of snakes, rhinoceros, exotic animals. When you're actually part of the Wild Kingdom yourself, these shows are kind of like adult entertainment. My, my favorite was Girls Gone Wild Kingdom. And it was always that crazy, like, elevator music that played in the background. Marlon Perkins was very shrewd. He not only had a connection with a mutual of Omaha, so any kind of accident was covered. He also sent Jim Fowler to do anything that might be dangerous. He sat in the studio, put a tie on, a air conditioning, cup of tea, while Jim was having his balls clawed by some tarantula or a lion or whatever. It was harder to pin the animal down than I had anticipated. Jim, I think, was just a, a really bravura kind of guy. He knew no fear. That or he was absolutely the stupidest person that ever lived. My family lived by the lessons we learned from Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. You know, like, if your brother is in trouble, everyone should flee. That was a close call. Long <laughs> For any aspiring glass artist, Light Bright was the thing. It was art, it was a puzzle, it was interior design, and it was like a practical lighting fixture at the same time. Of course, you would just write profane things in light, like the F word. I designed phallic things, so my mother would always scream at me, Stop that! You know, and I'd say, it's a cat, what are you talking about? I would do wonderful things like making ostriches or toucans. I got mad at my sisters about losing the little pieces on the light bright. Incredibly well constructed. And then they started giving those cheat sheet things you could pop over. Warning, shock hazard, and not at all a choking hazard. 
not even a little bit. Exactly what you want ages four to eight and up or what have you playing with. I love 70. Mr. Rogers was about this gentle old man. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Won't you be mine? Won't you be mine? Neighbor. Basically, he sang a song and took his shoes off at the beginning of the show, and that was supposed to be spellbinding somehow. Hi, picture, picture. I hated it as a kid, but there was something that would draw me in. Some sort of, like, weird Mr. Rogers mind control. Just one time, I just wanted Mr. Rogers to do one of these. Hello. Oh. Mr. McFeely, come in. Easily, Mr. Rogers. Mr. McFeely. That can't be an accident. Already in the they were warning kids. Mr. McGrab you and hold you to Mr. McAbduction. Mr. McThrow you in the trunk. There are all sorts of things that you could do. I was really hyper as a kid, and I can't believe I sat through entire episodes of Mr. Rogers. You could even make paper dance. Very relaxing. Come to Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. You just waited for the trolley part of the show. Woohoo! That was when Mr. Rogers was cooking with gas. Everybody's fine in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood until you go to the land of make-believe to where there are these carved apple head people with too much makeup on. It's very puzzling. The cat, like, me, like, meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 fine, king. It's like this weird code. Really scary. I was like, I want to get out of the land of make-believe. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. If I had to boil it all down, I would say I was trying to help kids realize that you are special. I like you just the way you are. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Right on. Judy Bloom writes about things that really happen in kids' lives. Not all of them nice. Do you remember Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret. Um, important book to me because until that time I didn't know why I was bleeding. Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret. It was about a young girl going through the change of life, having her first onset of menses. Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret. Gretchen, my friend, got her period. I'm so jealous, God. I was not allowed to read Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret, because it was, um, racy. Someone having a period or something? I'm sorry. I'm sorry I said it's on VH1. I'm sorry. We would sneak copies of every Judy Bloom book. That's how I learned about a period. You know, there's clues around. I mean, once in a while, you know, you're nine. You wake up one morning, you want to watch cartoons, you open the toilet lid, and... It's blood. You think that somebody was murdered in your house the night before. Ah! Nobody tells you that it's just mom's vagina is sick. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. Life is getting worse every day. I'm going to be the only one who doesn't get it. It seemed like something that you did not want. And dear God, what was it going to be like? This magic moment. She's jumping on a trampoline with my next door neighbor. And she just goes, what's that? And I'm like, ah, and I run home. I got it. I told her, got what? I started to laugh and cry at the same time. My period. I got my period. Oh my God, and the sun and the moon. It wasn't like a Shakespearean moment. It was like, you got your period. Here's a tampon. Don't get it on your clothes. Now get out and go to school. End of story. Thank you very much. I love 70. Coming up. The family that will live in our hearts forever. I would have sex with Florence Henderson right now. Next on I Love 1970. But first, the follicle fads of 1970. Hi, I'm Isaac Hayes with your follicle fad of 1970. Oh, yeah. The hair all the way down to your buttocks look. Crystal Gale style. Crystal's hair was so long she needed two bottles of Fabergé to wash it. Who knows more about hair than me? Bella says the primate of 70 is... It wasn't real. 
the youngest one in girls. The Brady Bunch is just awesome. They're funny and they're a nice family at the same time. First they all had their souls removed and then they met each other and never ever ever referred to anything that ever happened before. And it was really happy. The Brady Bunch. Where was the other mother and the father? I really liked this picture, but I didn't want to upset my new mom. Mike Brady's wife died, but we don't know what happened to Carol's husband. I just always assumed he died in a really bad way. I thought maybe he got burned alive. She just uh, put out for Mr. Brady one night, and boom, wow. Let's get a maid and a house and a dog. I would have sex with Florence Henderson right now. Give me a bottle of Wesson oil and 20 minutes in this room. That sounds like fun. That's an open invitation, Florence. Wow. Do you think it's weird that I had a crush on Alice? I always thought that uniform was kind of a turn on. Nobody wants to be needed that much. Looking back, Alice couldn't have been gayer. Why were we not on top of that? <laughs> Sam was the beard. When you start to criticize Sam's meat, something is definitely wrong. The best part about the Brady Bunch would be just having all that available thing happening. Wife swapping, try sister swapping, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Portia had back. She had all kinds of cookie. Jan was misunderstood, but you tell she was going to blossom like... I'll show her. The highlight for me was Bobby. We could really be friends in real life. Because we both liked dogs. At some point in time, I actually thought Greg Brady was really cool. It's a normal male reaction. But I associated with Peter. Ruby. And looking back, that was probably smart, because I've seen how they all turn out. Brady boys didn't do it for me, but I did have a little crush on Cindy. I found the list kind of sexy. Baby cat, baby cat, it's when do you come up? I wouldn't have hang out with them, they were too sissy, but let's be honest, we were all like them. That's kind of the sad part. I love Cindy.